That is definitely not Budic. I got stamina. This is so meta. What do you do with this bottle once it's empty? Just like, you toss it, right? Ideally, you recycle it because Mother Nature. Everything seems to have its place when it's time for disposal. Food, bottles, cell phones. But what happens when you finally keel over and your body becomes the waste? I'm Dolly, and today on Zoetic, we are looking at how we bury our bodies in the earth. Despite everything you might do to save the environment when you're alive, your body is still messing with the planet once you've peaced. So how can we go out with a bang and a clean conscience? Based on where you grew up, we all have different views on how to get someone to their final resting place. See, I was always taught that when people pass away, they continue watching over us, the living. So burial sites must be kept beautiful, close to nature, and well-maintained. In most of the Western world, people choose to either bury the physical body in a coffin or turn the body into ash through cremation. But both of these traditions have serious consequences for the environment. And with more than 50 million people dying each year, that's a lot of body bags. Let's start at burials. We've been burying the dead in the ground since the beginning of civilization, but the process has become much more complicated than simply stuffing a wooden box. Take the common practice of embalming, for example. It involves draining the blood from the body and replacing it with chemicals to keep the body from decomposing. Wait. But aren't we all gonna decompose at some point anyway? People have been embalming as far back as ancient Egypt, but today the primary chemical used in the process is formaldehyde. And that stuff gets pretty intense. It's used in everything from making car bumpers, to acrylic nail gels, to cabinets. The National Toxicology Program deems formaldehyde a known human carcinogen. Who cares? You're already dead, right? Well, just think about how much of this stuff we're actually dumping into the ground. It's more than 800,000 gallons of embalming fluid just in the US. And embalmers exposed to high levels of formaldehyde are known to have higher incidences of leukemia and other rare nose and mouth cancers. Back to the process of burials. After a round of toxic body coating, the preserved corpse is placed in a casket, one that's usually made of some combination of wood, plastic, and steel, which aren't exactly sustainable materials. Plastics and insulation become toxic chemicals when they start to break down in the earth. And all that pain and wood varnish just kicks things up another notch. Cremation, the process of burning the body until it becomes ash, has steadily been replacing burials as the preferred death service. Not surprising since ashes tend to take up less space than a body decomposing in a fancy box. Oh wait, the body is eaten. But even those opting for cremation aren't exactly blessing Mother Earth. Cremation involves placing the body in a special oven at 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you imagine what it takes to get anything to 1800 degrees? It takes a lot of energy, and most crematoriums are using coal or natural gas. Though, one cool thing about cremation, you can take the ashes and make diamonds, records, tattoos. You can bring your grandma with you wherever you go. Whatever you dream of, you can have it. So, you have a bleeding heart for the earth. You don't want to bury or burn all those chemicals for the sake of preserving your unpreservable dead body. So what else is left? A few green funeral companies have popped up in recent years to offer alternatives. What's the difference? Well, if you want to get buried, you can choose a wood that's biodegradable. You know, like a tree. A simple casket without all the metal and plastic. You can also literally become compost and have your body fertilize a public park as part of an experimental service coming to Seattle. Seattle, of course. In Sweden, they are experimenting with freezing bodies in liquid nitrogen and then shattering them through vibrations. It's a less energy intensive version of cremation. Or if you're feeling extra crunchy, you can try the Tibetan tradition of sky burial and let the birds have at your body atop a mountain. Probably not legal in the United States though. Why aren't we all dying in a more considerate way if we care so much about sparing the earth during our waking hours? Well, talking about death is hard, and traditions around dying are even harder to break. The truth is, green burials force us to admit that there is nothing particularly precious about our physical bodies. Really, we are just as ephemeral as a tree or a bug. And if we are all decomposing at some point or another, what's the argument for delaying it until the earth has absorbed every layer of toxin keeping your body from its natural course? It's worth going down these morbid trains of thought, but personally, I'm probably just gonna get mummified. I'd like to have my brain pulled out from my nose. Clearly death is inevitable, and at some point we're all gonna go anyway, so why delay that process? Process. What are your plans for the afterlife? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to Zoetic. Thanks for watching.